Hello and welcome to another queue breakdown. Today we're looking at a tension queue. This is sort of a reminder that you don't need to write everything two minutes, three minutes long. This was actually a requested as a 60 second queue. So let's have a listen to it and then I'll break it down for you. Okay, there we go. So what's going on here? We've got a mystery tension cue. Um, it was for a scene where somebody was walking down a street, investigating, looking in windows, stuff like that. So it's, hence it's called Street Walker. And it's only 60 seconds long because that's all that was required. In the end, I think it actually got cut down to closer to 30 seconds because it started just before the bass comes in. What you'll notice, let's have a look at this first, because this is something I always do. I have automated the stereo out so that it fades to zero by the time the bounce ends. This is quite important on this one because the last hit does ring out quite a bit. Do check if that's allowed if you're writing regular cues. Sometimes they just want a button ending that just finishes on a particular note. In this case, I was pretty much free to let it ring out because that's how the scene sort of worked. Um, should we go through from top to bottom? Seems to make sense. Uh, the piano is where I was doing any sketching. The, st the structure of this is basically a very short general cue structure because I've only got 60 seconds to play with and this is something that you might want to try is writing a 60 second piece of music to a particular emotion it sort of focuses your attention they are usable as well and if you ever need a two two and a half three minute cue you can always use this as the basis of your a section so having a few of these in your back pocket is not a bad thing to do. So within 60 seconds, you haven't got time to stick a B section in it. 60 seconds is an emotion, but it needs to build through the track. So in terms of building this time, we start with an electric piano Then quarter of the way through, we bring in some strings and a shaker. Halfway through, we bring in a bass. And the last quarter, we add these extra runs in the keyboards. A lot of the drumming remains the same because we, we really don't have time to get into changing it too much. Like I say, the shaker comes in a quarter of the way through. So perhaps the actually let's start with the drums because this probably makes sense. This is uh, from Damage, some mid loops. Then we've got the high loops. And then later on, like I say, a quarter way through, We've got this track with shakers in it. Because these are mixed quite well, I haven't really had to do any EQ on them either. Um, it's just, uh, it was just changing the level. I think I've brought the shaker down slightly. I 
don't think that's automated either no and then underpinning the whole thing we've got these beats from a Devorial Junior from Spitfire that's a great library if you just want a sort of grooving backline then I've got Logic Drummer adding these hi-hats here to start with in fact here's an example of another change when the bass comes in we've also got the kick from Beat Machine okay so I think that pretty much covers all our percussion so here's the biggest section And you can hear they're filling different areas of the sound field as well. That's partly to do with the spreader that is on the master out. So we are actually spreading the stereo field above 1K so that it does have that extra width. Okay, the bass is fairly easy because all the whole way through basically it's it's two chords alternating between each other. That's fairly easy. So what have we got there? Uh, a G minor. And... It is literally that simple, a G minor. Can we see that on the keyboard? I can play a bit lower. G minor and F minor. Super easy. But if you just put these little arpeggiated patterns in, you don't need anything too busy. And then it is accented with these flutters, which have a massive amount of reverb on them. The twinkle from Realm. At the end, they really build up on top of each other and the reverb keeps echoing that. So that's a nice addition to put on top of this Mark One. Now I've changed from the Mark One here at the beginning to a Mark One Classic later on. So this is slightly softer. And then you'll hear it change here. Which has a little bit more bite to it. So put together with that little flutter over the top, you probably hear it better towards the end. Again, still just two chords, so nothing overly complicated. What have we got left? Uh, the bass. That's it's literally just hanging out on the G and the F. Why have I put the entire chords in? because I'm using prime bass so it's easier to trigger just playing a whole chord because if you change the different uh, loops while you're experimenting they will fit if it's doing any fiddly stuff as well so there you go an investigative tension cue 
not overly complicated. I would have a go at doing something like this if you're uh, struggling to capture a particular mood. Try writing a 60 second piece because it really does focus you on that one emotion because you haven't got time to do this whole structure of A sections, B sections and that. You still have to build. So we're adding elements as we go. So great thing to do. And if you've got a few of these in your back pocket, like I say, really handy. I'll play it again as an outro so you'll probably hear a bit more of what's going on this time. Um, like and subscribe is always appreciated. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.